All right, welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be going over the Redmi um, project. By the time I post the tutorial, the actual project might not be finished yet, um, but I kind of feel guilty for not posting any tutorials and posting 3D stuff. I've been quite busy with stuff that's um, client related and stuff that's not 3D related, um, things like post-production and video effects and stuff like that that's not really related to 3d so it's been a bit it's been a bit difficult to um do 3d stuff but um i thought i would might as well do a tutorial on this project since all that it only really needs like another 50 hours of rendering or so um i might do some minor text changes just to make it look a bit better other than that um it's pretty much done so i thought i might as well do a tutorial on this so i will be posting this project um on patreon.com so you can actually download the whole project over there i've posted most of my projects on patreon.com as well um most of the tutorials i've done i've posted those projects and some of my best portfolio work um on there as well Right now I'm busy with the Corvette. I'm busy modeling a Corvette, Corvette inside of Blender. I'm learning how to use Blender's modeling toolkit. And once that's done, it'll take a while, <laughs> probably around 60 plus hours to finish that. And that's just the modeling. But once that project's done, I'll also post that on patreon.com, but that will take a while before that's done. So if you wanna go and get all my projects over there, you can find them on patreon.com slash Arthur Whitehead. Also follow me on Instagram if you wanna see what I'm up to. I do a lot of hiking photography. Um, photography really helps with your 3D. Um, so I've been doing a lot of hiking and a lot of photography on there as well. And I also post a lot of 3D stuff, which generally I don't post on Facebook or YouTube on instagram.com slash Arthur Visuals. And then Facebook, I try to keep up with that as well and just post um, more full project um, stuff like if I post a project on Patreon, I try and take all those images and post them on Facebook as well. I also upload all my tutorials and stuff like that um, on Facebook and sometimes I keep up to date with uh, Facebook as well. If I'm posting stuff on Instagram, I generally try and post it on Facebook as well at um, Arthur Visuals there as well. But we'll get into the actual tutorial now. So this is another project breakdown where I'll basically be showing you how I made this. Um, this is quite a simple project. I actually wanted to do so, so much more with this. I wanted to go into deep with like particle effects and sound design and um, audio remixing and all sorts of stuff. But um, immediately as I started, I realized I needed X particles to get the quality of effects that I wanted. I had a lot, bunch of people recommend me all these plugins, but they all look shitty, to be honest. Um, and X particles is the only plugin I could see that could give me the level of quality um, inside of Cinema 4D. Don't really know any other plugin. I don't really know any other programs like Blender or Houdini that well. Um, I am learning Blender right now and so far it's going really well. I might actually switch in, in the beginning of 2019 to Blender because Cinema 4D is just limiting me right now. It's good if you're a beginner, but I'm not a beginner anymore. So I need to upgrade to something that's more capable of doing other things. Um, so yeah so as soon as i realized i needed to i needed money to do those particle effects i completely trashed the whole idea and i just made something super basic since i already modeled the phone and planned it all out um so this is almost like a trash project which i still tried to put some effort into it um and then it ended up coming out okay but it's nowhere near what i wanted it to be um and i thought it was just good anyways to finish it and put it on my portfolio just to show clients that I could make something like this. So um, here you'll see that we have, I should have played this in the intro of this video. So you'll get to sort of see what the whole video is like. Um, but here we have the intro, some particle effects and the reveal of the phone or like a reveal of the silhouette of the phone. Then you go into zoomed in look and here you can actually see that you can actually see these pieces now, which you can't in here. I uh, don't think many people notice that. And then here it sort of like zooms in into the eye lens and then goes through like all these circuits and stuff and then out pops the other circuits and you can sort of see um, circuit with my logo on there. Um, 
and that's just some fancy phone terms I found on the internet, <laughs> pasted it there. Then it sort of comes out the back of the phone here, nice transitions, the light sort of fades out there, logo transitions out and then new clip transitions on. Then here, no transition, it just snaps onto the back of the phone. We've got a nice spinning transition like that. Dun, dun. So all of this direction and ideas and stuff like that in terms of scenes and stuff I didn't come up with. I completely copied another video. Um, so actually how I came up with the idea of this project is someone posted a project on Upwork saying he wanted a phone advert and he gave a bunch of reference videos. Um, and obviously I've never done one of those, so I didn't take the job, but I thought it'd be cool to try and make one just in case another job like that pops up, then I'll know how to do it. And I can also show people that I can do it. Um, so this is actually actual reference. And this one was amazingly good. Like the quality level here, you can see that the quality level is really, really good. Not really sure how to make a lot of this, um, but I tried to make it as close as possible. Um, but here you can see theirs is a lot more in depth and I just don't know how to do that yet. So I tried to make something as close as possible. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff I didn't include because um, I wasn't really sure how, but um, here you can see it's some really nice stuff. I don't actually have links for this online to, to see what the references are because he, he, um, I downloaded it off his Google Drive. So I'm not really sure what these are called or where to find them, but you can see there's some really good. And this just was one of the videos. I have three of them. So some really nice references here, which I used. Um, and I think I'll maybe do a couple more phone, like phone things like this, um, just to practice and get better at it. But yeah, so I, I just use that as a reference for all the scenes. Um, and I sort of just tried to make something very similar and I sort of improvised in a lot of it as well, as you can see. Um, some of them are very similar, but like this end part is blatantly copied, but um, a lot of them are just sort of um, adapted to sort of like, I don't even know how to call it, made my own version of it. So you can see we have this video here. Um, if you haven't seen um, other breakdowns I've done, I've pretty much explained the whole process. You you sort of figure out the timing of all your scenes that you want them to be based on the music. Um, you cut up all your music first and then you figure out how long each scene would be um, using these like placement blocks. And um, if you've never seen one of my breakdowns before, please go check those out because then you'll understand. I can't, <laughs> can't explain the same thing in every single video, but here you'll see that I've figured out the timing of all the scenes and then inside of Cinema 4D here, um, I've just gone and made various animations that fit that timing and I've thought more about how they transition into actual scenes this time rather than just having random scenes here. So the first one here is animatic one. So if I go into work production, Redmi me, uh, animatics, animatic one. So here you'll see we have animatic one, which is just the scene here like that. And then it fades into this one. I should probably go out into how I modeled this whole thing first. So I actually made the first time I made this project was, um, February at the beginning of this year. So I made this phone and then I just trashed the whole project. I just left it didn't touch it again. Uh, as you can see, I didn't put in all the details and then I ran into it again, like, uh, like a month ago, I think, and I decided to remake it. Um, so this phone I actually have, it's my actual phone. Um, so was, I already had a reference to use for the modeling. And then here's the old version of the project. As you can see, if I can pick something that's more visible. But yeah, here's the old version of the project. No details, nothing. Um, and then here's the latest version of the phone here. So as you can see here, I'm still rendering out the last scene, but here, if we take a look, um, let's break this down. Okay. So what's in here? Okay, cool. So, Here we just have, 
this is a square with a beveled edge um, and the screen is also a square and then I booleaned those two together and here you can see there's also just squares with bevels and then here's a cylinder um, beveled edges on the squares and then there's a cylinder there and then you just bool it together there you get the face um, and then what goes next after that then what we have is this section here which is also just a square um, with a beveled edge as you can see over here which is sort of laid on top of that and then we have the outside shell here which is the same concept a square with a beveled edge then here I sort of went a bit more uh, in depth and just beveled these edges as well just extruded some areas um, then here I just cut out this piece bevel this edge here oh you can see we actually have some errors going on there which I didn't know know about but it doesn't show up in the render so I guess it's not that big of a deal otherwise I would have seen it um, then here I took some squares as well beveled the edges uh, rounded out the edges and then just boolean them in and I did the same on that side I did the same at the top but here I use cylinders and then I also did one at the bottom. I was gonna go make the whole USB stick, but I was a bit annoyed that I couldn't use particles. So I sort of half asked this project. Um, so I never actually finished it properly. Um, but here I did the same. I just cloned a bunch of cylinders and Boolean didn't cut out those holes. And then I cut out those holes with cylinders as well, all using Boolean. So here you can see all the objects that we have. Like so. And then you just put them inside a boolean and then cut them out that way so um that's the casing of the of the actual thing and then here inside here we have the flash of the camera so if i go and hide this glass here you can see it's a pretty basic object um just a cylinder like so and then we have the glass on the inside Uh, which is just a sphere and then we have some glass just covering the whole thing which is just a cylinder as well and then here we have the back camera so if we hide the glass you can see what this looks like another cylinder um, if, you, if you're intermediate in modeling you should sort of understand what's going on here uh, if you're a beginner you might not and uh, this video is not for you if you are so um, yeah, so there's the cylinder and then I just subsurfed it, smoothed out everything. Um, originally it wasn't subsurfed, but when I got to at camera angles that were quite close like this, you could see the bumps in there. So I just bumped up the resolution just to make the final render look good. Um, I didn't want to have to remake this project in the future just because I wasn't happy with subdivisions and stuff. So I just went for the highest quality um, I thought would be um, sufficient and then I won't have to render this out again um, so yeah as you can see this is pretty basic I'm just making squares uh, beveling the edges and then booling in them it booling booleaning them in and that's pretty much how I'm just cutting out the whole the, all the holes here um, pretty sure there's a few phone tutorials on the internet which you can sort of figure out how to make a phone I don't actually watch a phone tutorial myself so I can't really um, ref give you any um, recommendations but here I also just made some gloss um, for the front of the phone and then I made obviously the gloss is reflective which is what I need and then the rest this back plate here isn't reflective um, so we just have the gloss that's reflective for the reflections and then in here we have just a cylinder something strange is going on here oh lol What's actually happening here? I'm not too sure. Well, looks like I have some errors going on here with my actual model, which I didn't know about, but I could care less at this stage. Let's just see, take the body. Um, about this one and this ok 
Okay, so we have the cylinder, which is cutting out the hole. Then what's what's wrong? Um, I feel like there was something else that's supposed to be going on here, but for some reason there's a mistake I must have made while making this project. You see, there's something wrong here. But anyways, if I go and look at an older version, or not an older, a different version, they should that problem shouldn't be there. So this is what the front camera should look like. Um, as you can see over there, I don't know what's going on in the other project. I'm not really going to go and bother and fix that right now because I could care less. But um, that's what the front camera should look like. like so. Yeah, I don't know what's going on here. Um... <laughs> it's actually really bugging me now, but um, so that's that and then That's pretty much the modeling of the phone The texturing is quite interesting um, So I put all that inside of a null called it readme and added an octane tag for the motion blur Then I saved it inside of a project and then inside my actual animations here um, I went and brought in an xref, so create xref, add xref, and then you bring in your your project with the model in, your C4D file with the model in, and then if you make a change to the project with the model in, it'll make a change here. So it just, it just keeps um, a, how can I say, a, a consistent phone model and textures across all the projects. Um, so that I don't have some projects that are slightly different and looks just looks weird when it comes out to the final rendering of all the projects. But here we can take a look at some of the texturing here. Um, I should probably actually just copy some of the lights. Or instead, let's just close this thing. Let's just go into actual model here. We'll bring in an HDRI. And then we can take better look at everything. So let's go in HDRI. So. <clears throat> okay, so. Come on. Okay, so here you can see at the front of the phone. Um, we have our screen here, um, which is just an emission texture with a with a image. Um, so here you can go and take a look here. So this is just an emission texture with an image attached to it, like so. So there's that, and then we have the piece of glass which is on top, which is why we're getting our reflections. And then down here, I actually have some modeled out shapes for the phone's buttons over here and I just added an emission texture to those which is giving us this these white parts here um, then here you can see we have a gold texture that's sort of just applied to our room here so this is just a goldish texture which is basically it's a glossy texture with an index of 8 and then some roughness um, that's pretty much it and then the back here gonna rotate this environment so the back here is a very detailed back case here so I actually used a um, where is this thing octane glossy so I actually used a um, fabric leather texture from polygon.com and then it's actually um, I just scaled it down very small so it looks it, it looks more like a plasticky texture rather than um, leather because it's scaled down so small um, and also ramped up the index to eight um, so it doesn't look more like so it looks more like a plasticky look than leather and then I just have some roughness as well going on in there which gives us a plasticky look rather than um, actual leather there. So that's why I did that. And then I also laid some slight bumps on it just to give it, um, once again, a plastic hard, hard, hard case look rather than a soft leather look on the phone. 
here we just have some glass which is just specular materials um inside there as well just specular material inside there's just specular material and here we just have our basic gold texture as well so it's pretty pretty basic project um and then once again just a gold texture here so what makes this tech project look really good is just the consistency with the colors we have black and orange pretty much or black and gold um which makes it look really good in this case we have silver i probably should have made that gold or no silver is actually fine probably should have done a variation of black gold and silver um so I should have maybe added some more silver around the project, but I guess it looks good in this case. But yeah, black and gold makes it look very royal, um, fancy, expensive. And that's pretty much how I came out with this. So you can see that because it's scaled down so small, it comes out to a really nice high quality look. So if we zoom in here, you can see what that looks like up close. And from far, it looks like a nice high quality plastic texture so that's the texturing of this project um like so and then we can take a look at some of the animations so let's go and open up this one no this one no this one as you can see i have a lot of variations some i don't actually use um Just jump through them here. So in this case, what we have, sorry, it's so slow. <laughs> it has to, every time I open a project, it has to reload all the textures and stuff in. So um, in this case, we have our model. Uh, we have, a, we have a, a null, which is animating its rotation here, like so. Boom, boom, and then here, the actual null moves and carries on rotating, slows down. And then here, the section here just slows down until it stops at the end. Um, I went and animated all that using um, some curves, as you can see, to get the actual final look of the thing. So here, you can see that I went and used some curves going on here. So um, I wonder why this is not going to zero. A bit strange. Yeah, it should be showing some curves here, but I don't know what's going on there. Anyways, um, so it's just some rotation with some curves um, to slow it down and speed it up in some areas like that. And then here the floor turns on because um, here there's no reflections on the floor, but here the floor turns on. And then on the floor texture, what I've done here is I've just um, keyed out the actual specular's um, intensity from zero all the way to 100 or zero to 0.3. So here the floor sort of fades on because the specular materials um, slowly turning on until 0.3. So the floor fades on as as this either as the phone its instance turns on here. So here, boom, it switches on like that as it as the phone rotates it switches on and the floor fades on and then they both rotate because they're both under a null and um, they rotate together so don't have to do any individual rotations of the phone they just rotate together like that and that's pretty much that project um and then if we take a look through the rest of them so animatic 16 is this one guess we can just use ones that are actually being used. So um, <laughs> here I had some crazy ideas, as you can see. Um, ideas I never actually went up and used. So you yeah, have some cool particle effects that I tried to do in Sound of Cinema 4D. Didn't work to my satisfaction. So I just, um, here you can see I'm trying it again. Didn't work to my satisfaction, so I just left it. But I'm not going to go through all the projects. I'm just going to skip to the ones we're actually using. So here just a simple camera's rotation um, position in the y-axis pretty basic animatic 17 here i actually have a camera following um 
the spline here. So here you can see we have a spline going like so, and then the camera just follows the spline and then is pointing at a target here. Um, so like that. Boom. So here you can see the camera drops lever at the end like that. And then that's how you get this animation. Boom. And then as that fades off, um, as that rotates there, it sort of goes in sync with this phone here. So it's good transitioning um, right there. Pretty basic animations. And this one, um, now we can actually get onto the circuit boards of the project. So here you can see we have a camera that's moving through some cubes. So here we have a camera that's going through the cubes like so, which is this scene over here. It's the scene over here. It's just going through some cubes with some circuit boards attached. Now for the circuit boards, I used J displacement, which is a free plugin. I'm sure if you Google it, you'll find it. Um, but you can actually make some pretty cool um, circuit board looking textures on there and then you can bring them into Octane and make your own custom circuit boards and stuff like that. So that's how I made the circuit boards. Um, but they're really high resolution so it might take a bit of time for these things to import. They're all 8K textures um, and I have uh, displacement, glossy, and normal maps for all of them and color depth maps. So like, yeah, quite high resolution. So here you'll see I've mixed two different circuit boards together. Um, like so. So there's a, one variation of a circuit board. If we go down, there's another variation um, of a circuit board. You can see they're really, really high quality and they're really nice. And it's all procedural when you make it inside the actual um, plugin. So you can come up with infinite, t infinite variations of these things. But here you can see them really good. And then I just pumped in a nice high quality um, glossy map um, to get these really nice reflections here. So here we have three of them and then we have the camera which is just moving through them here. So if you go on the camera here, you'll see that we have some motion blur ticked on and then just moving through like that. And then that transitions into animatic Mm. Oh, Cinema 4D just crashed. Transitions into, where is this project? Why can't I find it? Oh, there. Animatic 11. So, no. Animatic 10. So, go and open up Animatic 10 over there. And we can take a look inside and see what we have going on here. Same concept um, for the circuit board. This one just has a slight slight amount more detail since we're spending more time looking at it, not just uh, zipping past with a bunch of motion blur. So um, if this thing could actually open, that'd be great. So here we have our circuit board project. You can see it's just a plane with a cube in it, pretty basic. And then we have a camera um, just being animated down, as you can see, like that. And then I just applied that um, circuit board, circuit board which I generated in uh, J displacement. I applied the displacement, the normal map, and the color map. And then you'll end up with something, ugh, something like this. So I actually used the color map to. Um, I removed the saturation of the color map inside of Octane. <coughs> like so, drop the um, saturation, play with the contrast and gamma, and then I just use that to define the actual specular and the actual roughness of the, um, of the, uh, of, <laughs> sorry, my brain's blowing out here, of the circuit board. And then you'll get uh, some areas that look very shiny and metally and some areas that look more like a rubberish plastic look. Um, then I also have a fingerprint um, texture, 
um, which is driving all these really, really nice high quality reflections, nice 8K texture going on in there. Um, so if we take a closer look, you can sort of take a look at the details of everything. So you can see we have some nice fingerprints, fingerprinty, dirty look going on. And then we also have some bump maps to get these scratches in. Um, they don't look that great to be honest, but um, I don't think anyone will really care. Um, so that's my circuit board um, and how I made that. So yeah, I think that's all really. And then we just have um, for the lighting, it's just a simple um, octane light as you can see over there. And that's pretty much it. And then here I just made a texture for the block with my logo on it. So I thought I would add my own um, print on that thing. And I think that's it for all the projects, really. You render them out, uh, import them inside of After Effects. I've explained this many times, so I'm, get, I'm a bit tired of going through the whole process, but you render them out, you import them inside of After Effects, you import the After Effects compositions inside of um, Premiere Pro. And then you have your whole project going on there. So it's a pretty basic project overall. Um, just a slightly more into the intermediate advanced level, but it's fairly, fairly basic. Um, the, most of the thing that's taking up the most, most of what's taking up the time of this project is just render time. I just don't have a strong enough PC to um, churn these out very quickly. So. I think I've explained everything in here. So yeah. Oh, that section, I almost forgot about that. So let's just reopen up After Effects. Maybe we'll give this thing some room to breathe in close Cinema 4D. Um, then I'll explain the section here, but that's, I think that's all I haven't explained. Um, for the lighting as well, I just have a few, generally it's uh, two or three area lights to get these sort of um, studio-like reflections. That's pretty much it. Here you'll see we have a nice lens flare going and I'll also explain um, what's happening there. So if we open After Effects here, we bring up this Redmi over here. Any second now. Um, so here we have a flare going, um, as you can see, if I bring this down here, I have a lens flare going, uh, whoops, lens flare going with a, um, dirt particle texture on it. Um, as you can see, it just adds some realism to it. And then sort of, I sort of animated it to move with the camera here. So here you will see the lens flare sort of moving with scene when it's overlaid it sort of moves with the scene and just adds that nice 3d realism to it um and that's pretty much what i did what i did for most of the scenes here and then here you'll see if i where's the circuit board here the zoom in part so the zoom in part here um i just went and used optic compensation to get this um fov sort of look here so this thing here is using optic compensation inside of After Effects to get that zoom in look and then it just fades out here at the end onto the next scene and that's pretty much it so that's how I made the Redmi project um, in a basic concept way don't have to explain every single detail because um, you can go and make this your own way and apply it to your own projects but I hope you guys enjoyed if you want to download this project it will be on patreon.com slash author whited once it's complete um, I'm sure this tutorial tutorial will be uploaded before the actual project is posted um, so it'll be uploaded to patreon.com after the project is posted I don't think I'll include the actual renders of it because it's gigabytes in si file size um, and I want to make it as small as possible for you guys so I won't include the renders but the project files and other stuff um, you'll be able to download and um, edit for yourself. And then you can also follow me on Instagram if you want to see some of these renders in the final video. Um, and you can also keep up keep up to date with me there. I'm most up to date on Instagram. And you can also follow me on Facebook as well if you want to keep up to date with me there. You can. I do post a lot of my um, projects and stuff there as well. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you once again for another tutorial. Um, 
I know I should be making a lot more than I am making right now, but I just have so much. <laughs> it's very difficult to make a new tutorial every single time. Um, I sort of have to make extra work than I'm already. I have to make extra work than I'm already doing for myself, um, just to make tutorials on them. I can't make tutorials on client work or, um, or other stuff that I'm doing in my life. So. <laughs> Yeah, I hope you guys understand. I will try and make some more tutorials. I'm going to try and do some more beginner stuff. Um, I haven't really done any beginner tutorials for Octane. So if you guys want, I could do a beginner series for Octane Render, just going over the render settings, um, some how to make basic materials like plastic, metal, glass, um, things like that. If that's a thoughts that you guys would like, I could do a beginner series for Octane Render and it's just some maybe short, more shorter form uh, tutorials. These longer form ones do take a lot, do take a lot of time, and it's difficult for me to do. But thank you guys once again for your support. Have a great day. I will see you on my next video, and goodbye.